Hello everyone, and welcome to another video of progress on the house. Uh, this week we've got a few things that I've done. So one is fitting the chandelier that was in the parlour into the, uh, the entry there. Uh, and I did the wiring uh, for that and put a nice new light switch there on the wall. So we got that part. Uh, I did some more work on the uh, lead light panel for the front transom to go up there. Now that we're sort of getting all this area done, uh, it'll be nice to have that panel up there and then I'll start work on all the side lights. So that, and then we got a special part of the video which is, uh, I went and did some work at my mum's place and we did a little bit of a talk about uh, the skills that my great-grandparents, uh, my, my uh, great-grandmother, sorry, my grandmother and my mum have done over the years. So we've got a bit of a display on all the things that they've done. So I uh, hope you enjoy this video. So this is what we've got done on the lead light panel uh, so far this week. So I've got most of the glass cut, uh, I've just got the border to cut, it's in this real textured glass, and uh, a few bits to trim. It doesn't fit exactly uh, perfectly at the moment, all these bits need to just be tweaked a bit so they all meet up nicely just with a... a two mil gap or one and a half mil gap between them for the lead. So uh, I'll just go around and tweak all that uh, and then we can start the lead. So next week uh, I'll start getting all those things done. And then you can see the side light over there, um, how that's going to, sorry, that goes down here. So you can see how that's going to line up and flow down the sides so that it all looks like it's all part of the one pattern. So yeah, really happy with how this is going. I uh, love this bit around here. It really looks like it's got a twist in it. Um, like I said uh, on one of the previous videos, I'm not sure what uh, this is actually meant to represent. This is uh, part of a uh, pattern that I've seen or part of a, another lead light design that I've seen, which I liked. So I added it into the design uh, this design is very similar, uh, there's, that there is the rose pattern that we're going through the whole house with, uh, the rest of it's all changed a bit, so um, that's the progress on the lead light panel, so I'll show you the work that I did during the week and uh, we'll continue on with this next week.
as I mentioned at the start of the video, I moved the chandelier. So I've taken that down from over there. It was really dusty. This thing probably hasn't had a proper clean in a long time. I wouldn't even want to guess how long. So it's had a good clean. Uh, I've just noticed we've got one blown globe on it. So I'll pick up a new globe for it, but it's looking beautiful. We all love it in here. Uh, I've got a ceiling rose uh, up there, which uh, I'll, you'll see in the time lapse uh, shortly. Um, so that is actually the rose that I was going to use in the pantry. And as much as I wanted to have the pantry all specked out, uh, I wanted to use it up here. And I don't know whether it's worthwhile buying another one for the pantry. So. I probably should and I probably will so we'll see what happens there but I used that up there anyway and it's a really nice rose and uh, yeah it's all come together really nicely so we've got the switch on the wall here now this switch is the style that we're using but there will be three switches in a row here and we'll have one for an outside light we'll have one that's a um, for a two-way switch for all of the lights down the hallway and then we'll have one for this one here so I, I can, can kind of see us leaving this on at night um, you know that way when we go in and out that we do tend to pop over to the servo for uh, some late night snacks um, so uh, it's good to have the light on when we come in and out so we will probably have this one on and not want to have every single light on uh, and it, from outside, especially when people are coming, we'll, they'll be able to see the lead light with the light shining through it, which will look really nice. So yeah, so that's all that. Alright, so I just get a comfy spot. Um, so, what I'm going to do with this thin switch wire, I'm going to poke it down the wall, I'm going to fish it out, then I'm going to take this reel down, and I'm going to get um, three, um, three lengths of wire and tie it all to it, and then I'm going to pull it all back up. So, then I've got three switches down there, and it's going to be going to the um, the chandelier in the entry outside to a porch light I've got spider webs on my hair and then um, the other one's going to go down uh, to the hallway light so I'm going to have to run a length it's going to have to be a fairly long length um, down there I'll have to work out how I'm going to do that but anyway I'll probably join it so yeah I just got to find the hole that I just drilled, which is going to be the hard bit. All 
All right, so the hallway Oh, there it is. Well, that was easier than I thought it was going to be. All right, so I just got to get enough length to go down the wall. So four meters. One, two, three, four. We'll do it. So I'll poke that down. So I'll cut this off and tie it up here somewhere. Give it a bit extra. around here all right because that would be annoying if I went down there and then with me pulling on it to try and feed it it bloody pulls through so I'll um, take my roll of wire and go back down and run out three lengths so i'll see you back down there Okay, so I've got the three wires hanging out the wall. One of the one of them is the switch wire for that. So I'll just have to figure out which one it is. I should have marked it with a sharpie, but I didn't. So I'll have to um, get um, Julie to wiggle it while I'm up the top. And um, I've got the wire, another wire, connected to it to pull that up and tie it around the beam that's directly above it so i'll pull that up and um i'll um tie that around the beam and then i'll connect up the power well i won't connect up the power yet i'll, I'll tie that up i might leave the rest till tomorrow night i'll just get that lifted up work out which wire is the switch wire and uh we'll do the rest tomorrow night i think so I'll get in and do that. I won't take the camera up there. It's, I'm a bit wobbly up there. I'm getting better with the three trips up there tonight. But yeah, I don't want to be fussing with the camera. So 
I'll just come down and let you know what I've done in a minute. So I'll see you shortly. So look at that guys, switch hanging from the ceiling, gone. So I might even use that switch and just put it on the wall over there for the moment. Um, so that can be the switch for the uh, chandelier. So I'll take you down there, actually it looks pretty awesome. It's right in the middle of the transom and um, yeah, it's in the middle of the arch, but of course, because this is on an angle, the keystone is facing this way, it's gone off centre, but that doesn't really matter. Um, it looks pretty nice, so I'll, I'll take you down there and show you. So there you go, guys, the view from down the hallway. You know I love showing you these down the hallway shots, uh, but that looks pretty cool. The light's not on, that's just some uh, LED lights that I've got, just to light the place up but that's looking pretty cool I'll go just a little shot for you guys looking up at the rose with the chandelier hanging from it once that cornice goes up in there it's gonna look sweet Hi guys, so it's the next day now and uh, been home for, from work for about half an hour. Um, got that light switch on over there. Now the other two wires um, I'll connect up when I, I need to get a long board for three switches and get two more switches. So I've just got the one, the other two aren't going to be hooked up to anything right now. So at least they're uh, hooked up there ready to go. Uh, so I'm going to go up in the ceiling now and I'm going to connect up the power to the light and then connect the switch into it and we'll be ready to go. So I'll go and do that and then we'll come back and check it out. Alright guys, there we go. We're, we'll come out here and we're having a bit of a um, bit of a look-see at the light. Ooh, we got light. Um, yeah, so I've got a blown globe on it, so I'll sort that out. and. Um, Get, we'll have the three lit up then. Uh, when we've got the lead light panel up there, it's going to look awesome with the light coming through that. Exactly where uh, people would be standing, it's going to shine right through that, so that's good. When It'd be nice if the four was lit up too. It doesn't sort of project the light down very much, but I guess we can see it a little bit, hey? Yeah, you can still see it. So, um, it good. yeah. So once all that lead light's on there, it's going to look magic. So anyway, just thought I'd show you that. So there you go guys, look from inside, how good does that look? It's cool, it lights up the, the vestibule and uh, it's dark outside but it just lights out. It's, how cool is that? Hi guys, welcome to my mum and dad's house. So. I've got this little spot here, the shower, they had their bathroom redone in here and um, this used to be where the taps were and they couldn't stop the leak, they had it repaired several times and the water used to seep through and break this plaster off. So I've got to chip this out and fill this so that they can then paint over it and be good as new. So that's the job we've got to do today. Um, I've got another little job in the toilet. They had their bathroom and toilet done at the same time and the toilet, um, the um, architrave around the window, they did a terrible job. So I've got to just measure that up and I'll make up some new architraves for them at work and I'll come and install that uh, probably next weekend when I do the second coat on this. So we'll get in and do that and then when mum comes home uh, she'll, uh, I'll see if she wants to show you some of 
the quilts and um, the uh, pot holders that my great grandma made. So we'll ask her if she wants to show you that stuff. So for the moment, we'll just get in and do this. Hello everyone, welcome to this special episode where I'm going to show you a collection of some of the crafty things that my great grandmother, my grandmother and my mum have made over the years. So the first generation uh, Australians came out from Germany to South Australia in 1846, 10 years after settlement in South Australia. I remember my great grandmother well. Uh, Minna Konzak, but I don't recall her doing, any, didn't see her doing any fancy work at all, but all her, uh, her daughters did. So my grandmother was the second eldest, the first one died uh, very early on, but she was into making uh, potholders and she made absolutely hundreds of them. See the boxes? She was very, very fond of that. She also did fan ones, but um, they've been used in a bo beyond being able to show you anymore because they're worn out. Um, great on crocheting, this glorious tablecloth. Must have taken such a long time to make, but it's beautiful. And she used that in her dining room. She also did these, and they're, um, they're just made out of cotton material, nothing very fancy, but she just loved... Um, doing that sort of thing but in later life she crocheted um, a lot of uh, coat hanger covers and patchwork was her main thing. She made uh, cushions and potholders, they were her two things. And that's also another nice table piece, piece she made. And now we will go to my mother, Mike's grandmother. Yeah. So my great aunt Dorothy, who was grand, my grandmother's uh, younger sister, she was 11 years younger than her, she did uh, crocheting, she was very good at tatting, which is uh, quite specialised isn't it, so it's so hard to do, but she made these lovely long legged rabbits and these, I know these were sold for one pound when she made them because that's what I paid when I bought these off her, but I just loved them so much that I wanted a reminder of her and she lived into her 90s too. That's my uh, mother, uh, her, one of her favourite pastimes was smocking and she must have made, well she, I know she made hundreds of dresses and they went all over the place. She was very good at smocking. And then after she retired off the farm, she only ever made two quilts uh, by machine. Um, but she wasn't so fond of that. She'd rather do that. She uh, she used to knit um, little teddy bears and uh, little dolls that used to go into the care boxes that were sent to Africa and she'd do 20 of those every year. The church filled 20 boxes. So she did the uh, those uh, for those people. And that one. She could not manage tatting. She tried, but she couldn't do it. 
but she was very good at crocheting and you can see how very fine that one is and uh, that's beautiful and I got that early on in our marriage and I know this one was for competition she was it belonged to the country women's association and they had table day and they'd have to make something uh, specific each area would um, contribute the same thing and they'd get prizes for the winners and this was a cover that would go over a jug to keep the flies out and you can see on the top of it it's a little cup and saucer that's very fine too but I said oh I'm having that <laughs> nice reminder when we were cleaning out the wardrobes we came across these two uh, evening gowns and I would say that uh, she would have worn those to um, dances after she was married if they weren't after, they would have been just before her marriage. And she was... Dave and Grandma made those, or only? I, I, I'm not sure whether um, Mum made them or whether her sister made them. So this is my mother, Lorena Smythe's uh, wedding dress. That was her wedding. She was married on the 27th of March, 1941, born in 21. <laughs> so she was... Uh, Two weeks off 20 when she was married and this is one of the bridesmaids dresses this was her sister Eva's dress which I think is absolutely gorgeous and uh, Eva made the dresses she made the three bridesmaids and the wedding dress and she was 17 years old she became a dressmaker and uh, she died at the she was still single when she died at age 27 of leukemia which was a real shame. I've sewn uh, most things. I've sewn a hood of a motor car. I've sewn babies' clothes. I've made wedding dresses. I've made men's clothing, children's clothing. Um, now I love patchwork. Um, and this is the quilt that I'm currently using on our bed. Um, I don't really like it, but I had a lot of pieces over. No, sorry. That one I made for my for my grandmother for my mother. Let's start again. This one I made for my mother because I had so many pieces of material left over. And this is the quilt I'm currently using on our bed. Slightly slightly different, but I really like it. And we in the climate here we use these six months of the year and when it gets cool over winter we have a a heavier quilt but so that that's the quilting so and this is this is the last quilt for the grandchildren then they've seven of them have all had one quilt i've got to put the backing on and the edge on this one so He's just turned eight years old. The real baby of the family. <laughs> the, my son is mum's first grandchild and he's 22. Yes, <laughs> and this one, um, my sister and I married, mar whoops, a bit close. My sister and I married brothers and unfortunately they're both deceased. So their children... Um, my nieces, two nieces, their four children have become our grandchildren too, so hence he's the youngest one. Otherwise, Mike's had the uh, oldest and the youngest of the real grandchildren. <laughs> <laughs> right. And the other thing, I can't stand watching television, not having my hands working. So <clears throat> uh, I've made over 20 quilts. Um, I've probably made, must be about 15 of these. I was going to say 20, but yeah. <laughs> And that one, this one currently being used. My husband just said, are you finished with my rug yet? <laughs> you want to use it? <laughs> and this one, so, yes, I do do enjoy doing them uh, very much. It keeps, keeps the hands going. I also like doing uh, craft work, like Christmas decorations and, you know, mucking around. <laughs> So I think you can see the 
well, going back for many generations, we've all been good with our hands. Um, my brother, he can do anything. what he, he can do what you would say. He can do anything as well. But me and my brother do. We got different things that we do, different things that we're good at or that we enjoy doing, probably more than anything. So yeah, he's he's good at. And you'd say, oh wow, that looks amazing. And then he wouldn't say it to me, but he. <laughs> he would probably think the same thing of uh, things I make. We they're different, but they're both, you know, we can make things to a high skill level. So we've definitely got the genes that have come down from a long way up. Um, I guess back in the day, uh, that's what everyone, that's what the women did a lot of this kind of stuff. They made their own dresses and, you know, it wasn't easy to probably be able to afford a lot of clothing and all that so uh, it was something that they did but um, you know I, I think my family uh, the, the the women have definitely done things to a high level of uh, a high skill level um, so you know I'm quite proud of that um, and you know hopefully my kids would and my grandkids would think the same of me and that's the thing of doing this house and the whole reason that I wanted to put this on YouTube because I wanted my grand crew, my great grandchildren uh, and grandchildren I want them all to be able to see well for one me as a young man even though I'm not really a young man right now but uh, they'll remember me you know sort of hobbling around maybe the, the great grandchildren uh, I can't see them coming for a very long time, but they'll be able to look back at the house and what I've done and look at the house and it will just be a house to them that is that's grandpa's house. But it, then they'll be able to see the videos and see that, you know, I made all this stuff myself and, and they'll be able to, you know, feel feel proud of me for that. So that's pretty cool. So, um, yeah, that's that's the end of this little video. Just a real short one. But... I wanted to show you uh, some of the things that uh, you know I'm proud of my great grand, uh, my great grandma, and my grandma and my mum for all the things that they've done over the years. So yeah, that's that's about it. And I hope you enjoyed that. I know it's not going to be everyone's cup of tea, but I know that uh, there are a few of you out there that have asked to see some of this stuff. So. Uh, if there's if there's anything else that you would like to see uh, more detail on any of this stuff I can certainly make some more videos but until then uh, I'll see you on the next video that we'll be back doing some more renovating and uh, until then you take care we'll see you soon cheers right, something else that I just thought of that I did this week this here is uh, I'm not sure what these are called um, so rather than go for the, the rose or the rosette that sits down here in between the transom and the door, I decided to go for this top piece, <laughs> we'll call it. Uh, if anyone can remember what Caleb calls it, or Caleb if you're watching and you want to uh, drop a comment for me and tell me what these things are called, that would be awesome. But um, yeah, I've made this up, uh, and what I'm going to do, let's see if we can bring this down a bit. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a little bit of carving on these to make them look a bit more like a, uh, I guess, an arch, um, and it'll be hollowed out in between. So, that's once again keeping the arch theme going. Um, and then these pieces here, what I'm going to do to make it up. Uh, and I'll do a video on making these, but I'm going to make these up out of separate pieces. So I can get the, uh, if you can pick up that edge there, I should have taken this off, sorry. Um, I can make this piece, I can make that block there with a, a curve in it. Um, this can be a full round piece that then goes down on there. Another, uh, or, and then the top piece will all be uh, just one piece. And then that will all get put together and we'll end up with something like that. Um, I, when I saw, uh, now this is going back to a drawing that Marvin did for me. 
and he did the, 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 the drawing of the pocket doors there. Uh, he had that design of architrave on there and when I saw it I went, oh that, that looks much nicer than what I was going to do. So I've just changed things up and um, I'm going to do that. So that's another thing. Now another fess up time. Um, the window surround that I did outside went horribly wrong. So I think really what the problem was that the um, the mortar, uh, sorry, the render was too thick and it's got shrinkage cracks all over it. So I'll come up with another way of doing that. So um, I'll, I'll take you out there and I'll show you uh, when I actually get back into that job sometime next week. But um, I'm going to chip all that off and I'm going to use uh, some blue board, so some cement sheeting and I'm going to layer it up and I'm going to do a similar thing to what I did to these arches and I'm not going to route them obviously because uh, if there's a tool to route cement sheeting I don't know of it and uh, it would be a very handy tool to have but uh, I've come up with another way of layering them up with some hardwood packers in between and then I'll be rendering over the top so uh, I've, I've got something in mind that I think is going to work beautifully and it's going to give me the end result much easier and I'm not going to have to mix up and go through a ton of render so that's another job that I'm going to be doing um, it might not be next week we'll see how we go uh, but yeah that's uh, another fess up time and uh, I, I will show you I'm not just gonna like sneakily just make it disappear I'll show you how bad it went and um, there, there will probably be plenty of people that will go, oh hey, uh, you should have done this, you should have used that. And anyone who's got comments like that on what I could have done, uh, I'm happy to hear it because I, I'm not a renderer, but I would like to know if I do want to do some rendering, I would like to know what I need to do to do it. And uh, I researched a lot of videos and I just couldn't find the information that I was after on YouTube. So uh, if anyone can point me towards some good videos or if you've got some knowledge in the area, let me know, that would be great. Um, so yeah, that's, that's about everything for this week. Just turn the camera around and give you another, I can't get enough of looking at it. So I figured maybe if, if I like looking at it that much, maybe you guys would like to have another peek. So anyway, um, now next week, there may not be a video. Um, what I'm doing is I'm working on my logo for the Rose Villa and I need to put a fair bit of time into that. Uh, with getting the, getting the work done firstly and getting the videos done, editing the videos uh, and not forgetting work and also having a bit of uh, personal downtime uh, where I get to do something that I enjoy which is going and doing some photography. Um, there's just not enough time to do everything so uh, there may not be a video next week um, but if there's not a video you'll see what, what the work's gone into with uh, the new logo and also I'm going to be working on a new intro uh, where I can tell you, uh, I tell all the new viewers a bit of a story about how I, why am I, why I'm doing this project and uh, you know, how I come to be in possession of it and those kinds of things. So a bit of a, a story intro and a new logo and we'll have a nice fresh look and hopefully uh, can attract some of these new viewers. Uh, the, the, it's been rather frustrating lately that um, seems like I'm losing viewers as much as I'm gaining them. So we're at a bit of a stalemate. So I've got to just change some things up a little bit to keep the channel growing. So I've got to put a bit of work in there. So um, I will definitely, I won't be able to stop myself. I will do some sort of work and any work that I do, obviously uh, the following week, there'll be a nice you know, detailed video in all the work I've managed to do over you know, the two weeks 
So yeah, so that's that. So that'll be the end of the video for this week. Thanks very much for watching and for all the people that are commenting and, and just viewing the videos. I really do appreciate it. All the support that you guys give me is uh, really, really appreciated. It's, it's hard work, as I've mentioned, doing these YouTube videos. And um, the support just it helps me to keep going and, uh, and enjoying it uh, along the way. So thanks very much for that. And uh, I'll look forward to getting this video uh, edited now and out to you. If not tonight, it'd be uh, tomorrow night. And then we'll see when the next one's coming, but I may not be able to get one out for next week. So thanks very much. You take care and we'll see you in the next video. Cheers.